Hey, I'm Angela. And I'm Natalie. And we are Blonde Tourage, coming to you from New Orleans, Louisiana, at the Overlook Film Festival. Last night, we got to see the world premiere of Abigail from Radio Silence. Angela, did we not love this film? 100% loved it. It had everything we wanted in a movie. Oh my god! It had action. It had gore. It, it had, had comedy. Comedy and the characters. You just fell in love with every single one of them. Absolutely. And and these characters, it's funny, they were all not good people. <laughs> but there's something about Radio Silence. They just make you fall in love with these anti-heroes. After a group of criminals kidnap the ballerina daughter of a powerful underworld figure, they retreat to an isolated mansion, unaware that they're locked inside with no normal little girl. Let's start out talking about Alicia Weir, who definitely is no normal little girl as far as an actress is concerned. She is like, I feel like if you were having a conversation with her, she'd be one of those kids where you're like, she's wise beyond her years. Yes. Her acting was so mature, like she's been doing it forever. She had to play a century or centuries old yes. character, and I just got that from her. She must be an old soul. Yeah. They even said in the Q&A <laughs> that during her audition, she had the most amazing audition and actually scared them. And I don't think she was supposed to or something. Something like that. But she was fantastic. There were certain parts where she would just do a facial expression mm -hmm. that I was like, it, it hit me inside. Like it made, it almost made me like have goosebumps. Mm -hmm. Like I would just see her, like she'd be, she'd be very intense. And then just like a little smirk yeah. that would change the whole vibe of that scene. And it was creepy, but it was so impressive. I couldn't stop can't thinking believe myself. Like, it was how, a little girl. How old is she? I think she's like 14 years old. She's Unbelievable. From Ireland. Great job. <laughs> Melissa Barrera, who has done other films with this troupe, uh, Radio Silence. Well, wait. Yeah, they did Scream. Yes. She was in the Scream series. She's phenomenal. And she's got beautiful, expressive eyes. And like there are scenes where she has to cover her mouth because they can't reveal, their, reveal identity. their identities to the little girl. So she was the one looking after Abigail. And she would put on her mask and she has these expressive eyes. And she's really good. Catherine Newton. How can you not love her? She is so amazing. I, I want to be her friend. I know, she I know. She seems so cool. But <laughs> her character was so funny. She had so many little one-liners that just... It, oh. <laughs> there's so many things. Like, I don't want to spoil the film, but there's just so many little things that she does. And I, I can't, we can't spoil it. But one thing I do want to say is there is a dance sequence. Of course, you know the ballerina dances in this, but she's incorporated in this dance. That whole scene, I didn't want it to end. No, it's gonna definitely be on TikTok everywhere. Everybody's gonna everyone's be doing gonna the dance. do it. But this dance, like you know how there's in Dirty Dancing, I've had the time of my life, or in, you know. There's always like a dance move in a movie that everyone loves. Like even in Wednesday, yes. that dance. This is the new one that everyone is going to be talking about. It's gonna blow Megan away. Yes. What about Dan Stevens? He is so good and I can't believe this was the second film that he was in at the Overlook Film Festival because we saw him in Cuckoo. He's a hottie. Oh my gosh. Even back in the day in The Guest, I mean, I noticed him yeah. and I was like, oh, he is cute. Yeah. But um, he's so charismatic on screen. I just want to mention Jean Carlo Esposito. He is so good at playing that like very stern, very scary, very, very serious, intense, very serious mm -hmm. kind of character. Mm -hmm. And I thought even though he had a small part in this film, I thought he did a great job. Definitely. As soon as Kevin Durant came on the screen, I saw his face 
but I could not place where I've seen him Same. before. But I know I've seen him in movies. And right. in this role, he was hilarious. Hilarious, and he was also really sweet. I know, and and the the bond that he formed yes. with Catherine's character. Yes, they were they were just adorable, an unlikely couple. You Definitely know, unlikely friendship, <laughs> but he was he was really good. And last but not least, Angus Cloud, who we love and are were heartbroken when he passed. Um, before is one of our favorite shows. And um, he was wonderful in this. And he actually had a bigger part, even though it wasn't huge, he had a bigger part than I thought because of the timing. He's one of those people who you just fall in love with him and he looks like such a bad boy. Yeah. But there's some sort of softness to him some something that yes. is so likable yes and what a shame that, I know that he's gone um, mm -hmm. but the directors talked a little bit about yeah. how nice it was to get to spend more time with him in post production yes. we're gonna show a little bit of that right here it was beautiful to get to edit edit him right to, to sort of get to live with him a little bit longer in, in post and, and um, you know we certainly feel the responsibility of the movie to to um, let his legacy live on and uh, we, we just can't say enough about how touched we are that we got to we got to know him. I, I want to just add one fun little story from the set. Uh, this is Catherine's story. Catherine and him were hanging out and she was like enamored with the way he was so in the moment and always just like never inauthentic. Like nothing would come out forced or it was, it was incapable of it. And she said to him some version of, you know, you act you kind of remind me of like Marlon Brando. You just are always like in the moment. And he goes, thank you. I don't know who Marlon Brando is. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I, mean, I feel like that encompasses a lot of him in such a beautiful way. <laughs> One thing that was really cool that they talked about during the Q&A uh, was they talked about the vampire teeth. They said they wanted to make them look more primal and animal than usual vampire fangs. Abigails are the kind of teeth on top of teeth like a shark's mouth. When the mouth is open, you see they're designed to inflict as much damage as possible. And I got that. They yes. look very jagged uh -huh. and crooked and, and just Broken. Like broken and, and yeah, if, if you got bit by that, it, it, it was gonna do some major, major damage. Yeah. Uh, and a little side note, they gave out these fake teeth. <laughs> and the first set were, you know, those silly little vampire plastic. teeth that you get plastic. Yeah. Um, but the second set of teeth looked more like Abigail's teeth. Yeah. So last night while we're getting ready to go to bed, <laughs> all of a sudden I turn around and she's got the teeth in and it scared the living daylights out of me. And I, I wish just, I, I had jumped, footage. I, uh, I wish I, you did too. I'm so, so sorry funny. I scared you, but yeah. you laughed and you took it like a champ. So. I don't think I've ever seen a movie with this much blood. There was a lot of blood in this. I mean, I've probably seen a couple of others that had a lot, but I mean, the Evil Dead's always have a lot of blood, but this had a lot. And a even, lot of exploding blood. Yes, and some of the actresses said that they've never been in a film that has required this much of them yeah. as far as blood is concerned. So great job with, with that aspect of it. And the special it. effects. Oh, yeah. Definitely. They were so good. I just, there were so many things that I loved about this movie. Like yeah. I said earlier, it had a little bit of everything. The comedy, the action, the, the gore. gore the relationships. Definitely. Just, I, I can't wait to see this again. And I have to tell you, Angela, you must see Ready or Not. If you love this film, I know you have to see Ready or Not. Didn't the director say that this is Ready or Not on steroids? Yes, they did. <laughs> Abigail comes to theaters on April 19th. And this is one of those movies that you must see in the theater. You need to experience the whole thing because it is an experience. Definitely. You've got the sound, the visuals, 
and the way that other people are reacting to the movie. Mm -hmm. They're laughing with you, they're jumping with you, they're gasping, they're screaming. Oh, it's it a was social, so, it's a social movie. Yeah. Definitely. It was an event. Uh -huh. And uh, I'm so glad we got to see it here at the Overlook. This made me feel a lot like how we felt last year when we saw Renfield, Renfield. which is another one of our favorites. So, when you do see this, please let us know what you think in the comments. And thank you so much for watching our review of Abigail. Please remember to like, subscribe, and hit that thanks button. We'll see you soon.